Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about one UX best practice that I think you should start incorporating in your daily life. And that is the fact that you yourself are not the user. A lot of the time designers, developers, creators, whoever they are actually assume that the experience they have with the product or their own expectations or experiences or reactions to a particular product are going to be very similar to other users of the product as well. And that actually is not really the case. This is known as the false consensus effect. And what it means is that we're projecting our own experiences, behaviors, and uh, uh, expectations of a particular product on other users as well. A lot of experiments have been conducted about this particular effect. And I'd just like to highlight or start this video with one example. And that's actually of a Stanford professor, Lee Ross, who actually conducted an experiment in 1977. He conducted, I think, a bunch of experiments. But one experiment he conducted actually involved giving participants a conflict and then providing them ways to solve it. Along the way, they were actually asked to do three things. Obviously, one thing was figure out how they're going to resolve that conflict. Another thing they actually uh, were given to or asked to do was to figure out how others are going to think about resolving or which option others would choose to resolve this conflict. And the third thing was they had to describe the person who would probably not choose the same uh, option to resolve the conflict as them. But what would this person be like if they actually chose something else or some other way to resolve this? What's interesting about this study or maybe not that interesting because you already have the backdrop of what I'm trying to say is a lot of people actually considered that most people are going to solve this problem in a very similar manner as them and they're going to choose this option. Let's call it option A. A lot of people are going to choose option A because they themselves have chosen option A. But what's significantly interesting here is, or surprising maybe, is a lot of people considered others who would choose, let's say, option B or option C, probably option B because I think in this study there were only two options, they considered these people who would choose option B as irrational or not rational enough so by default even we or people in the or participants in this study actually labeled others who would choose the other option as an anomaly and it's really important here that we sometimes do the same so imagine you're actually creating a landing page and you're positioning some buttons you're positioning the header navigation and stuff along those lines and if it seems that the landing page looks good to you and it again is usable to you then you think that it's going to be usable for other people as well I'm going to tell you why that's wrong. Imagine you're actually creating a product for yourself or the type of users like yourself. So imagine I'm a, a very proficient user of Figma, not to brag, but let's say if I'm, I am a proficient user of these design tools. If I were to tomorrow create a design tool myself, I would, and this is exactly for users like me because I'm a designer myself. I'm a UI designer. I use Figma on a very regular basis. I would, let's say, assume that other users who are Figma users as well would have a very similar experience to this new product that I'm designing as the experience that I'm having. But that actually would not be the case because my position of elements, how I actually go ahead and create this UI, this interface, and the experience that I have is going to be strangely and diversely different from some of the other users who are actually very similar users like me, just because of the fact that I have a lot of context information and I have, I know the product inside out my experience would not necessarily relate to the people or the users who have very similar interests as me or maybe even very similar experiences as me usually people don't really have a lot of sim a lot of similar experiences they may have similar interests but their experiences shape them their reactions to certain problems to certain in interfaces to certain environments shape them and they those can be vastly different but even if we assume that all of these things were consistent that still does not mean that these users who are very similar users like me with similar experiences are going to have the same reaction to the product primarily because I have a lot of context information about that product and using that product that other users do not. Now coming back to reality if that's the case about creating a product that I myself am the user of and I'm designing it for users like me and these users have same experiences and same patterns of interacting with things as me even if I can't really again assume that I'm the user there imagine how can we assume that I'm going to create a product that's not going to be for a user like me but it's actually but I'm going to consider myself as the, as the user so this is something that that's really bizarre that a lot of people do including myself which is why we have to keep on coming back to it which is why we should really again do something 
And that thing is we should start testing with real users. We can't really judge our designs by ourselves. Neither can we judge our designs by the experiences or by the judgment of other team members who exist within the team. That judgment process isn't really, again, neither is it cohesive, neither is it holistic, and neither is it really that informative. Sure, there can be certain things, for example, button placements, uh, the typography, uh, and certain things that obviously we can take inspiration from, but in reality, in order to test a design out, we have to place it in front of the real users who are actually going to be using it, rather than just between us or the design team or the product team. So what I want you to do or take away from this short video is start testing out your designs. Don't just assume that users are gonna interact with your site similar to how you're interacting with it or how some of the internal team is interacting with it or what their, what their again, expectation or experience is interacting with that particular product. Also, once you have actually created a design, don't validate it. Don't validate, what, what do I mean by validation? I mean you actually have created something and you basically just give that particular design for users to test and you're just looking for validation. You're just looking for them to go ahead and actually say that, hey, okay, this design works or whatever. Rather investigate their usability patterns. So ideally try to come up with different examples that you may not yourself agree with, but again, that may be something that's interesting to users. Don't try to stick or fixate yourself on one option about how to do things. Rather research users, research how other sites do it, research, how users are interacting with your product, research how they're feeling, research what they're thinking about. Again, start to take visual cues and start to again investigate more thoroughly on what users are actually experiencing and some of the frustrations that they have rather than just providing them one option, probably throwing out a survey, probably uh, placing a Likert scale and just figuring out like, okay, if users really like it, or are they happy with it and that's it. That's not how you go about and test things. There are some videos that I can actually upload on how you can actually go about and do some great testing on some of the usability or evaluating usability of your products. And we can do that later as well. But for starters, just stop thinking that you yourself are the users. Even if you actually are, even if your persona is the user, stop thinking that your experience is gonna be the same as uh, the experience of other users of the products. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.